ウエナ村にいた頃に無双してた理想がすぐそこにある。Wow. Right around the corner. Dude, is this still gonna go? Oh no. Oh no! What's this letter? All right, what's up, everybody? Guys, I can't believe it, but we have arrived at the moment of all moments. You already know, season two, episode 18 of Mushika Tensei, which is called Turning Point 3. Yeah, I actually realized by last week I hadn't glanced at, like, oh, what the title for next episode would be, but I immediately, of course, got told about it by people in the comments. And uh, that made me aware that, like, this episode was going to be coming up. And of course, you know, therefore I had a week to prepare, right? But still, my immediate first reaction was like, how the hell are we right now about to get this Turning Point 3 episode? What the fuck is going to happen, right? I mean, of course, we've been on this whole university arc basically for the entirety of Season 2. And I don't know if that's necessarily changing as a result of this Turning Point. It kind of does look like it, right? Of course... I'm not gonna lie about it. I've seen the uh, the opening, right? And I've been, yeah, very open about the fact that it seems like it's kind of teasing a potential direction for what this is gonna be headed into, right? And I would suspect that this turning point will therefore be sort of the instigator for that particular direction. I'm not gonna give away what the direction is just for anybody potentially watching this intro commentary who has not actually been watching any of the op openings and purposefully skipping them, I guess, right? But yeah, I do wonder what would cause to be the event that's going to set that thing in motion. Is this truly going to be sort of the goodbye to the to the university arc? Or is this going to be what will cause us to depart this place? Uh, you know, could it have to do... I don't know. I mean, I, I start combining a bunch of current plot lines, right? Like, oh, could it potentially have to do with Nanahashi developing that you know, teleportation circle or whatever, right? Like, is that going to... Is the progress she's going to make there the instigator of it? Is it actually going to be that, like, maybe her experiments are going to go wrong and it's going to create create another massive teleportation event or something like that that's going <laughs> to cause us to end up somewhere else entirely? Is that possible? Is it going to be some type of simple, like, event that happens or Rudius catches wind of a particular development, you know, when it comes to Paul or when it comes to his mom? That's going to cause him to, again, to leave? Or what exactly, what's going to be the event happening in this episode that's going to mark this as a turning point episode? You know, the first turning point episode obviously revolved around the huge teleportation circle. It changed the entire, the entire sort of future prospect of the show. Because Rudius had never figured that he'd be going on a whole crazy adventure that a bunch of people would go missing. And again, that the story of the show would basically get turned upside down completely. The second turning point, I feel, was a little bit less significant. Maybe not in the grand scheme of things, because I think we're still going to be obviously running into Orsted at some point. And there is uh, a lot of unresolved business there, no doubt, right? Whatever that's going to be, how it relates sort of to the man god, and all remains to be seen at this point, right? But I feel like... Turning Point 2 really was kind of an introduction of something that would become much more important later on. And right now, it still remains to be seen what that actually is. Turning Point 3 right now, yeah, again, what is it going to entail? I honestly have no idea. All that I know is that we very wholesomely wrapped up the, uh, the Norn Depression arc, I guess, last episode, right? Where she managed to kind of get over her um, uh, fear of Rudius and her the way she looked at him and she was willing to actually start giving him a chance. They mended their relationship very nicely. And of course, yeah, lo and behold, that happens. And we get these that like... Because it's so obvious in, like, in one way. Because it's like, okay, what else is left right now that we're supposed to do, right? Again, I can only think about Nanahoshi. I can think about Zenoba doing the research on the doll. Maybe that comes into play somehow. That we learn who actually created it. And what the deal, uh, you know, with those dolls actually is going to be. You know, if there is more, uh, you know, than just that single one. But I honestly don't know. Again, I'm just going to let myself be surprised, guys, I think. We're just going to dive into this new episode here. I'm super eager to find out what Turning Point 3 is going to be uh, about. With that being said, guys, if you enjoy my reactions to Mushka Tensei, then, of course, you'll be able to check out the full-length reactions every week on the lowest tier over on my Patreon page, which is going to be linked on top of the description. I'm also currently reacting to a couple of lore videos about Mushka Tensei over there on the lowest tier if you want to check those out. Um, yeah, so, you know, go and check it out. But for now, let's just dive into this new episode of Mushka Tensei. 
I never actually was sure whether Rujat had actually told the people that we came across about his story or about the Spurs story rather, I guess, right? I mean, I don't know if he was just improving their reputation simply by his own actions and helping a bunch of people, right? I, I actually don't know if he spread the word about, again, about like what actually happened to the Spurs too. Because there's still a lot of people out in the world that don't know. And you'd figure that, like, through word of mouth, maybe the story would spread. Although, then again, this is a fucking vast world, of course. And therefore, I guess it would leave a bunch of people who wouldn't know the truth in, in either case uh, yet. So. <laughs> figure. A self-made figure. <laughs> oh, dude. I don't even know if you're going to finish that thing. Especially knowing that this is going to be turning points. I'm just waiting for everybody to get blasted away again or something. I mean, that's probably not what the event is going to be. I doubt it's going to be a, like, a repetition of the first turning point episode. But what is going to cause it to be a turning point? He figures she's still a little bit mad. She doesn't seem to be in a complaining mood, though. <laughs> Only fair. Earrings? I don't think they're really her style. Oh, maybe they are. I wouldn't go with blue, though. Oh, man. Okay, maybe she does want the attention. Oh, 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 she means that kind of attention or what? Okay. Sure. We're not gonna give you that, yeah. Okay. Putting in the word. Yeah, you want to treat this boy right. That's a bunch of people you could potentially piss off that you don't want to piss off. Oh, shit. Something organic from our world, dude. Wait, 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 wait. Yo, 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 yo. Don't go by that fast. Summon inorganic matter, organic matter, an organism, e.g. a plant or small animal. Organism from the... Is this like a step-by-step -step plan? I guess so, huh? Finally, experiment with returning the summoned creature to its original location. Dude! This... I, I'm telling you, dude. This experiment is once again going to cause something to obviously fuck up majorly. And that's going to be the turning point, isn't it? Or that's maybe what they want me to think. It's too obvious, to be fair, but... <laughs> Literally, man. Imagine Rudius somehow ends up back in the real fucking world. That would be an insane plot twist. I, I, I'm probably hyping myself up too much by even thinking about it, to be fair. But what if? You know who? Voldemort? <laughs> Authority on summoning magic. Holy shit. Okay. Zenoba made this? That's a massive fucking dragon. And he gave it to Julie. How wholesome. Dude, Julie is literally like my favorite character at this point. <laughs> She's so wholesome. Ah, I see. She already worked for Zenoba, I think, back in season one, right? 
personally entrusted him to my care. Oh, okay. Sure. Yo, look how young Rudius look, man. Oh, shit. I guess so. Yeah. Dismiss mana from outside to counterbalance the mana on a body. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, is she supposed to wear this? Like a crown? ザノバとサイレントに協力してもらったおかげで小型化の目処は立っているんだ。クリフ先輩も少しずつだけど着実に目的に向かって進んでいる。いいことだ。and the question is, do you really want her to have like less sex with you? <laughs> I mean, I guess we're also lowering the risk of her having to do it with others, right? That's the whole point, but... Nah, dude! Why is this all way too wholesome still at this point? This is literally just a summary of like, oh, everything is going fine and dandy. Look how, you know, look how great of progress we've made over these past... What is it? 18 episodes or something like that. <laughs> Only for it to... I'm, I'm just waiting for the thing that's going to cause it all to go to shit. What the fuck is going to go wrong here? 10 minutes in. I'm still not sure. Oh yeah, not for longer. For much longer. Oh, fuck. Give me the cut. Oh no. Oh, okay. What? She wants to have a conversation? Ah, uh, she talked about this with Aisha. Is it about Ariel? Oh, a period. Oh no, she's pregnant. Is that the turning point? Rudy's gets a kid? <laughs> no, I'm waiting for it to say, but it's not yours. <laughs> nah, it obviously is, but... That is a much more intimate, subtle turning point than I'd figured. Is that what it actually is, then? Is that all that there's going to be to it? I mean, it's still major, of course, don't get me wrong, but... Uh, that you're happy? <laughs> Jesus Christ, how are we at this stage in the story already, man? It's fucking insane. Rudy is literally becoming a real adult in front of our eyes. Oh shit, that's not what you're supposed to touch her. Definitely not in the presence of Aisha. Really? Alina Lee's will? Okay, yeah. Fair enough. Family, huh? <laughs> Grandma, yeah. He went Gaga. <laughs> Yeah, he'd have to, man. It's the least he could do for being the instigator of uh, having so many kids and grandkids. 
上名村にいた頃に無双してた理想がすぐそこにある。Wow. Right around the corner. Dude, is this still gonna go? Oh no. Oh no! What's this letter? What's he reading? What's this note? Send us rescue difficult, send help. Oh shit, Rudius is gonna send there, be sent that way. Yo, are we going back to the mangle? Oh fuck, okay, yeah, no, this is a turning point episode. It, it was from Geese. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, you will now. Yeah, you will now. You'll regret it now because you're not going to be there for your own fucking kids. Yeah, exactly. Fair enough. Yeah, I was going to say, talk about. Positive plot developments. It has not been too bad, no. Really? You're saying don't go? Still? Yeah, no, we're going. We know we're going. <laughs> I hadn't. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I mean, I think I think he's talking about regretting the fact that you're not going to be there for Sylphie. For your kids. The mission itself is not going to regret, right? Going on. That's what I'm saying. That's the regret right there. It was obvious. Yeah, basically. That's also a part of life, I guess, huh? Yeah, it's like you choose one opportunity over the other. That's what everything we do in life. You pursue one thing, you don't get to pursue the other. Bring it. Await the next mating season. When it comes, Linnea and Persona will challenge you. Have relations with one of them? What the fuck are you saying? You will gain even greater happiness. I think that's kind of... Uh... Yeah. Yeah. That's not something in the picture right now. Oh god, the water? Linia and Pulsena are not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. Oh man, yeah. He literally doesn't know what choice to make in this moment. Okay, she saw it. No, we should. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Of course, they're gonna want Zenith rescued. Nah, you're not. You're not. I mean, I guess he's making that choice for now, though, but. Something's gonna force him to go. Has to. あいつがパウロと合流する前にドクタンで出したのかもしれない。どうですわね。あなたは残った方がいいですわ。エリナリーゼさん、もしかして行くんですか?孫夫婦のために一肌脱ぐぐらいはさせてくださいまし。クリフ
He's gonna feel so fucking bad. Zenoba, that's not helpful. Yeah, you're not really giving us your advice. I guess he figures he's, that's not his role. Yeah, they're not going if he does. Yep. Um, he's saying you can always still return and yeah, your kid will be fine, I'll make sure of it. Sonobe is kind of a fucking... he's a G, man. <laughs> He can always be relied upon. This is a this is a interesting turning point episode. It's nothing. It was nothing like spectacular or nothing super crazy, right? It was just a hard decision, suddenly out of nowhere. Seems he's still not ready to, you know. Go for it, though. So, again, I'm kind of looking for an external reason to push him. Oh. What are you up to, Norn? Yo, did she... Did she figure she'd go? Yeah, we can't have that. Oh, my God. You... That was way too heavy for you. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's reason enough. We don't want you to go, so we have to go in that case. Oh, man. Right back to the conflict, dude. Oh, shit. That would push me. That would push me. I, got, I gotta go. I gotta fucking go. That's so nice. You know, that's gonna... Yeah. That's gonna give her the extra push to also actually... Wow. Be nice to, to Aisha moving forward again and, you know, have their relationship mended. Desert journey, okay. What fucking desert? Are we, are we nearby a desert? I'm not sure. I need to uh, look at the map, honestly. Man! Not the turning point I had expected, that's for sure. But uh, a great one nonetheless. Alright guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and of course, you can watch the full-length reactions every week over on the lowest tier on my patient page, which is going to be linked on top of the description, so make sure you go and check it out, and then I'll see you there. Yeah, no, again, I literally just said it, but it was a turning point episode, alright, but this, I guess, did sort of solidify for me that turning point episodes are literally just turning points in the story, but they don't have to be bombastic at all times. That's, I guess, still the... You know, the thing that I wasn't sure about is like when I reflect on the first two turning points, then they were both kind of spectacular in their own ways, right? Obviously, the fight against Orsted and again, the massive teleportation event that was crazy and came out of nowhere. And so much actually happened in those those final scenes of that eighth episode, I think, of the first season, right? Um, yeah, that were kind of coming out of nowhere. Whereas this was a lot more subtle. This was just... It was not even something that you... Well, again, I think the opening just largely gave away to me that, like, okay, Rudius was going to join um, the quest to rescue Zenith after all, which is what I, of course, had been wanting all along, to be fair. Like, I got the fact that Paul basically told him, don't worry, we got this, you don't have to. But I still wanted him to be there for it. And I wanted also the adventure to come back, at least for, for you know, it doesn't have to be, like, for the remainder of the show or something, right? But just 
I do want to see more adventure in the show too. And the university arc, of course, in general has been relatively slow paced. Still very enjoyable. I really, I really liked it so far. And I like all the characters that we've met along the way. Um, and, you know, it's like what was pointed out to Rudy is during the episode. But there's a lot of progress we did actually make when it comes to marrying Sylphie. Her being pregnant, of course, which is something I'd almost forget about. But that was just as much of a turning point, I guess, in this episode, right? But again, something subtle. Like, it's not... Obviously, you can't just expect the baby to be here out of nowhere. Um, a pregnancy announcement would be what kicks it all off. And so it's subtle because you don't immediately notice the consequences of it. The kid is not here yet. And um, therefore, it can be this amazing, crazy moment or something. But still, it was like, uh, yeah, it was a turning point for the story, right? Just like Rudy is going back to, uh, uh, to actually help rescue Zenith is going to be yeah, a turning point for now. I wonder if this season is still going to be able to cover that entire rescue journey. I feel like with, I think, six episodes left, we're going to be able to end the season with us having rescued her, I guess, right? But yeah, I mean, I don't know, to be fair. I I, I hope that this season will be covering it because otherwise I'm going to be waiting for a very long time, probably. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, no, again, it was, it was like I said, it was subtle. I, I liked the, the Man God encounter, by the way, as well. The mango just continuously being uh, vague, of course. Although, you know, I feel like I actually figured out what he meant for, for uh, well, from the start. You're going to regret this no matter what, basically, right? Like, there's, there's yeah, you're going to regret not being on a mission to help rescue your mom because the team is in trouble. And you're going to regret otherwise missing the birth of your kid, potentially, right? And missing to be there for it, uh, him or her. Uh, missing to be there for Sylvie in the process, too, of course. And your sisters who you just welcomed back into your into your home. So there was going to be regret either way. And I think that's once again a valuable life lesson too. It's it's impossible to avoid regret. You know, also the line that he threw in there about like, oh yeah, if you're going to pursue something, that automatically means you won't have that time to pursue something else. Time is our most valuable asset. And um, yeah, you simply can't spend it on everything basically, right? So... God, man, again, it was a turning point episode for sure, but it wasn't the turning point episode I had expected. Definitely a lot more of a subtle turning point episode than the previous two, but that's, you know, I welcome that, of course, just as much as well. And I'm super eager to see exactly what that journey is going to look like, how long it's going to actually take Rudius in the show here to get to uh, finding Geese and Paul and everybody else, Roxy, of course, as well, right? Yeah, and then to see what that actual mission is going to be uh, or how long it's going to last, I guess, in Bagarit to try and actually... Um, get his mom rescued, right? I am super, you know, eager to see how it's all going to evolve or, uh, yeah, basically pan out, right? So anyway, guys, hope you all enjoyed my reaction to Mushika Tensei Season 2, Episode 18. If you did, then of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and you'll be able to check out the full-length reactions every week over on the lowest tier on my Patreon page, which is going to be linked on top of the description. So go and check it out. And then for now, I want to thank you all a lot for tuning in, and I'll look forward to seeing you back in the next episode.